And then secondly um, is theory. So after an analyzing a lot of reference, there's some um, things I found or that I also read online in some great blogs, for example, by Daniel Fotheringham, which I'll present also later. Um, and basically it just helps analyze the reference and helps like clarify what is happening when you look at the reference so you can understand it better and not just copy it. Um, so for example, one thing that is important to remember is that to balance its center of gravity, the creature needs to have a strong foothold. So the best way to do that is to have the best or the most um, space in between its legs and that's how they walk. So you always see like triangles um, where they place their feet. So that's always, uh, if you're ever in doubt, you just try to find what's the most balanced pose for your, for your animal. And then also, this is not really um, stuff for my shot, but it's things I thought was good to remember or good to know while I was animating. So here, for example, you see that cats specifically um, place their back legs where their front legs left. So um, you can see, like best you can see in this reference, where it just exactly puts his foot right where the front foot left. And um, it's, I don't know if this is like 100% true, but I think dogs don't do it as much. So you can see in the dog tracks, they're a little bit more offset, while the lion tracks, they're more perfectly like in on, on top of each other. And also one thing I learned from Daniel's blog, which I'll share later, uh, is that oftentimes the back legs mimic what the front legs are doing, but they're just offset by half a cycle. So if you see here in this reference, the front legs, like the right foot lifts off first, and then the back, the right foot also lifts off first, and then it does a little hop, and then the back legs just a little hop. And whenever the front legs slow down, the back legs also slow down, but just half a cycle delayed, if that makes any sense. Um, and I just thought this was helpful to block out my shot because um, just knowing a few like theory things really helps with uh, your idea and then of course it's important to look at reference to see how it looks like in real life. So you can see this in this cat's uh, when it starts from a trot and goes into a run. You can see that the front legs initiate it and then the back legs kind of follow. So here you can see... Oops that it's trotting and then the front legs speed up first here and then the back legs follow so that's a good thing to note but of course you can see here the front right leg lands first but the back left leg lands first so that's where reference comes in real handy because this is not a perfect um cycle that is just moved back by half a frame or half a cycle you can actually see that they, they, they run differently. And depending on the species is also different. And one thing I thought was really cool about cats and big cats is that their head motion is really still compared to a lot of other animals. So obviously this cheetah is a lot lighter, a lot skinnier uh, than, a, than a tiger, but um, you can see kind of the same thing happening in the tiger where the head motion is very still compared to the body especially when it's locked onto a target. And um, when it's gaining speed, it still uses a little bit of head motion just to get the speed there, like you can see in this reference. But once it gets up to speed and once it has its eyes locked onto the target, it's pretty still. And then one thing, also a very great tip from Eddie, uh, is if you look at any reference, you can see that their thighs and ankles are very parallel to each other. Um, so that's great for blocking out your shot to see what pose works. So in case you don't know if your back legs are standing right or anything, just check that the ankle and the um, thigh is parallel and that's pretty like ballpark correct. And then of course size and weight. So depending on like because the tiger I was animating is a lot heavier than any house cat, um, I really wanted to make it look heavy. Of course, that's something I struggled with a lot and I still struggle with, um, but it's um, basically anything heavy moves a lot slower or has a lot less, or it accelerates and decelerates much slower. So the curves and the graphs will be a lot more like eased out at the tips. 
and then there will be a lot more overlap and secondary. So if you look at this clip that I put together with these cats fighting each other, you can see that they stop moving pretty quickly, and there's not a lot of like secondary overlap and stuff. It's all like very contained versus these tigers fighting, and this is all real time speed. And it's um like every kick like it wobbles a lot um, because of its fat and its um, like muscles and all that. So that's good to keep in mind as well, just to make sure that your creature looks the size and weight that it is, because it's too easy to make something look light in CG. And here's just really quickly and very, very basic how I visualized it for you guys. But of course, this is not completely accurate, but anything small could turn a lot faster and could accelerate and decelerate a lot faster. And anything big would have a lot of ease on the curves. So um, if that makes any sense. And then one thing I really wanted to use to my advantage was that the bodies of tigers are extremely flexible. They're really squashy and stretchy. And how Eddie taught me to look at it is that the head, shoulders, and hips are like uh, three bouncing balls, basically. And they're kind of tied together with this elastic body. So um, instead of animating it as one huge piece of like the, just the body itself, um, I wanted to separate them to give a little bit of overlap so that it looks more like fluid to give it more like organic life. So that's what I will show later on how I set up my Maya scene to do that. And then for personality, of course, you got to look at your own creature. But I just thought that um, snow leopards are so fun. They're so cool. And they have so much like strange personality. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys these cool clips of um, snow leopards doing awesome things. So it's these kind of small fun moments that I think bring your shot to life. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of, to do with body mechanics, but any small thing that your character does, like if it shakes its paw or if it like looks around, shakes its head a little bit, that's something you can add to your shot just to give it more life. And that's a lot of what um, Eddie told me or Eddie suggested in my shots, which made it so successful um, because it had so many small details that gave it a lot of personality and life. 